Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming of Beginner's Guide. <clears throat> Today's topic is going to be uh, measurement, accuracy, and precision. And I have two examples that I want to work through to show you uh, what are some pitfalls about taking measurements. Taking voltage measurements isn't that bad. Where you run into problems is resistance measurements and current measurements because there's lots of little pitfalls in there uh, that could either give you an inaccurate measurement, uh, taking the measurement incorrectly, which actually skews your measurement, affecting the system that you're measuring, that kind of thing. The first piece that I want to talk about is resistance measurement. And I want to use a a specific example and that is called an RTD, a resistance temperature detector. Basically an RTD is a resistor and it's a resistor that changes uh, its resistance with uh, changes in temperature. In reality all resistors do this. There's a temperature coefficient that's related to any kind of resistance. But what makes RTDs is that, uh, what makes them special is that the <clears throat> resistance change is very, very predictable and very, very stable. An RTD is normally made out of platinum. It's a wire wound, so they take a wire and they wind it around some sort of a core element or whatever uh, until they get a resistance of 100 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. So the circuit element is your basic resistor, like that. <clears throat> How is resistance measured? Every kind of uh, ohm meter, DMM, etc., that measures resistance, uh, it sets up a constant current uh, through the uh, resistor, and then it measures the voltage drop across the resistor. So for example, if we were to set up a, a current of one milliamp across a 100 ohm resistor, uh, the voltage across that resistor is going to be one volt. And that's how every single kind of meter works. Uh, Sounds simple enough, but there are quite a bit, uh, quite a few pitfalls in here. Uh, first of all, when you uh, take the measurement, you're not directly on the uh, resistive element because this is encapsulated in a probe, and this comes out to connectors. So in reality, what this looks like is this element comes out to. A set of leads and those leads uh, both at the contacts and internally because copper is not a superconductor so that they have their own resistances so th these are normally abbreviated as like RL1 and RL2 <clears throat> so the first problem you run into is that Sure, this element is exactly 100 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius, but let's say that the wire and lead resistance out to the meter is uh, 3 tenths of an ohm. So 0 0.3 ohms, 0 0.3 ohms, like that. Uh, the <clears throat> resistive element uh, changes its 0 0.385 ohms per uh, degree Celsius. Uh, roughly, the, you can take some more decimal places out and there's actually better formulas to calculate this. But the two resistances of the leads here, 3 tenths of an ohm, 3 tenths of an ohm, combined will give you an error of about 1.6 degrees. <clears throat> and when you're trying to take a really precise measurement, that's a, a pretty big uh, error that gets induced uh, into that. The thing to be careful with is, at least my first thought was, well, why, don't, why can't we just calibrate out these three-tenths of an ohm? 
you know, just take your reading and subtract out the, you know, 1.6 degrees that you uh, uh, added in there. The problem with that is these leads also have their own independent temperature coefficient. Uh, so this, resi uh, this resistance of the leads will actually also change with temperature. So if you stick the probe into something cold, this resistance might go down. You stick the probe into something hot, this resistance goes up. And now you're actually tracking two separate independent curves because you have a separate temp uh, temperature coefficient for the platinum and different temperature coefficients for the... <clears throat> Uh, the wires. Uh, also, the leads, the, the contacts where the sensor actually plugs in, uh, can also change with resistance depending on how good the connection is and you know maybe uh, the contacts are just slightly corroded so now the connection isn't as good, etc. The first way to deal with this kind of inaccuracy is uh, these RTDs come in a three uh, terminal combo. So what you have is another lead that's broken out like that and then this will be RL3. This a three lead combo there are two basic strategies for taking a measurement with it and those strategies both uh, work to reduce the error of how much resistance you actually read across the element. One way of doing it is first you take a measurement of uh, the uh, resistive element just like you would normally. So if we call this just regular R, what you get is RL1 plus R uh, plus RL2. And then this gives us your uh, RT. The, the total resistance. The second measurement you take is between uh, this lead and this lead. What that does is it gives you RL2 and RL3 combined. So then this becomes RL2 plus RL3. Assuming and this is more than just an assumption, this is uh, deliberately designed that way, RL3 and RL2 are made exactly the same, same as RL1, where they use the same length of wire, they terminate the contacts at the end exactly the same way, so you can assume that RL1 equals RL2 and RL3. So then if you take RT, and subtract out RL2 and RL3, what you get is the final resistance of the temperature sensor. Uh, this is a, a clever way of doing it. The, the biggest problem with this is you have to take two independent readings, one here and then one here, to be able to do the math for this, so uh, you'll actually require a little bit extra circuitry between the uh, sensor and the uh, uh, DMM or microcontroller, whatever it is you happen to be using to do uh, to measure temperature. Another way of doing a measurement like this is with uh, you know using the three wire sensors with the Wheatstone bridge. Uh, a Wheatstone bridge is a, a little bit more of an advanced topic, and I'll uh, go into more detail in, uh, about a Wheatstone bridge in a later video, but I just kind of want to touch upon it. Where in a Wheatstone bridge, you have a voltage source, just call it V, and then you have a voltage divider on one side where it's a resistor, and then another resistor, and then this point gets grounded. That's uh, one side of the bridge. The other side of the bridge, in the case of this uh, setup, is you connect to uh, uh, this lead here. Then uh, a resistor gets added into here. 
just like that. So what you have is on one side you have a voltage divider consisting of these two resistors. Then on the other side you have again a voltage divider but now it, uh, one side of it consists of RL1 and R and the other side of the voltage, side, uh, voltage divider consists of RL3 and this other resistor. When everything's matched properly what you do is you take a voltage reading between these two points. What makes this uh, a really good setup is a couple of things. First of all, RL3 and RL1 effectively cancel each other out. So the, these resistances are effectively ignored. The other thing is that because the reading, uh, the voltage reading uh, is taken through RL2, uh, a voltmeter uh, has very, very high impedance, so the current flow across RL2 is almost negligible. You know, we're talking uh, pico uh, amps, femto amps, you know, really, really tiny currents. So the resistance of this is already low because it's the lead resistance, and we're talking a very small current, so the voltage reading here is virtually negligible. I'm sorry, the, the voltage reading here is negligible, so the voltage reading here is very, very precise. Uh, yet a different way to improve the accuracy of reading an RTD is with a four-wire reading. The way this looks like is there the... There is another lead that comes off of the sensing element and we'll relabel them all. This is RL1, RL2, RL3, RL4. And again, in uh, this kind of setup, you need a current, whereas with the Wheatstone Bridge, you had a voltage source which provided your current. Again, you need a current, so let's say we have one milliamp that's coming into RL1. <clears throat> And then we take our L4 and we ground it. So now there's one milliamp that's flowing through uh, this uh, circuit. And now we take a voltage reading across RL2 and RL3. So as I mentioned previously, a, a voltage a voltmeter has a very, very high impedance. So the current flowing this way through the meter, which kind of kind of looked like that, <clears throat> is negligible it, it, because it's so small and uh, that voltage directly translates to what the resistance is so like uh, so as we said previously if our resistance is 100 ohms and this current is one milliamp then you should see one volt across the resistor yet another thing you have to be concerned with i don't know if you see a pattern here or not is the current that you use to uh, measure the resistor. The problem uh, with the current is that this current actually causes the resistor to heat up uh, because the resistor is dissipating watts and the heating, the internal heating of the resistor can skew the reading. So you have to be careful. So if you were, you know, a one milliamp for reading the resistor is fairly standard for uh, a basic RTD measurement. Uh, but if you want to add that extra little bit of accuracy, you can make this current even smaller. So like a quarter milliamp. Uh, something you have to be aware of is how much current is actually coming out of your ohm meter because on different ranges ohm meters can actually use different current standards different current sources so when you might think that you're making a good measurement but your meter is let's say applying 10 milliamps which is quite a bit more power dissipated in the resistor you uh, could be skewing your reading uh, now let's take a look at uh, measuring current and I 
uh, we've already talked about burden voltages in a previous video. Uh, now I want to kind of flesh that out a little more and show you some practical examples on a bench of some pitfalls of measuring current. So the story of measuring current begins with this. Uh, this is a board I designed to uh, help me uh, measure current and uh, you've seen this before in one of my previous videos where I was talking about the uh, inductive uh, clamp meter. What this board does is first of all it connects the data lines all the way through from one side to the other side which uh, makes it nice because this works as a pass through uh, through the whole board and uh, the power both the 5 volt and the ground lines come through here up to these jumpers independently here across the jumpers and then over to the other side. What this allows me to do is I can take the jumper and disconnect it and you know if you've ever stored a jumper you can just hook it onto one side like that so you don't lose it. So now the uh, 5 volt side is broken and now uh, that same 5 volt side is broken out to these banana plugs the 4 millimeter bananas here and here that you could uh, connect a uh, amp meter across or using these uh, 1.1 uh, uh, inch headers and uh, taking current measurements with this caused me a whole bunch of problems and I want to show you some of those pitfalls so for the test setup I have the board here it's plugged into one of the HTC factory chargers the cable then runs from the board all the way around into uh, the phone you it's plugged in right there and now if I take the jumper that we uh, took out earlier and I plug it in you'll see my phone light up that it detected that it's charging that power is now running from here all the way into the phone so the uh, thing I want to really emphasize is the, the downfall, the, 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 all the issues I had with uh, measuring current stemmed from the voltage drop from one side of this to the other side. And uh, to measure this, I'm going to use the four, uh, the four millimeter uh, banana plugs here, and I'm going to hook up the, uh, this meter right here. So at all times, we will be measuring the voltage drop uh, across, uh, come on, get in there, across that junction right there, the, the problem child. Uh, of course, this, there we go. So what we're seeing is about 16 millivolts, 17 millivolts of voltage drop, which is not not bad. That's not terrible. Uh, trust me, it gets a lot worse. So the first way I decided to measure current is using my fluke meter. You can see it's turned on over here. The leads are set to current and I've got these nice little alligator cl clips on the end. At least I thought they were nice. So to measure the current, I pull the Uh, jumper and now that the jumper is pulled you can see that the meter is showing me 5.1 volts across this terminal and now I can go ahead and clip these guys on like that and like that so now uh, you can see that the meter is showing me 1.192 amps which you can see the phone lit up it knows that uh, we just started charging it but this phone should charge at 1.5 amps <clears throat> and actually you can see it dropped off a little bit to 0 0.984 uh, amps so it's charging you know half an amp less than it should be and if you look at the other meter now we have a uh, 100.4 millivolts a voltage drop that just developed across this junction.
So uh, this voltage drop is actually preventing the phone from charging at its full rate because uh, the phone uh, throttles its charging back up until it sees uh, about 4.9-ish volts. So that was the uh, <clears throat> uh, my first experiment with it. And uh, what I found was that if I go ahead and take these alligator clips off and just use the leads directly I could get a much better charge rate. Uh, let me find that happy spot. Uh, come on. Sorry, this is kind of hard to do with the uh, the banana jacks in there, but uh, that's still pretty abysmal. So fairly quickly, I, well, let's say abandoned using uh, the alligator clips with the these because of the horrendous voltage drop. Another way of uh, checking the current that I tried is using the meter directly right into the bananas. In the setup here, we have uh, this meter still measuring the voltage drop across here, but now we piggyback the banana plugs off of this, and you can see that one's going into the meter here. And now we're gonna make that final connection and we should see the phone light up. There it goes, now it's recognizing that it's charging. And you know we're we're charging actually pretty close to uh, the uh, desired amount. You can actually see it kind of back off a little bit, but we're still dropping a fair amount of uh, voltage. There we go. It's kind of stabilizing at uh, 1.3 something. So we're dropping on a 78ish milliamps, 80ish milliamps, but we're still not getting quite the full charge. Uh, into the phone that we'd normally want. And the reason for it is that this uh, meter has a resistor inside, the burden resistor. And that resistor, it, it's small, but it still drops voltage across. You can see the 73 uh, milliamps. And if we wanted to, we can do the, ma do the math here to figure out how much uh, burden the burden resistor actually is, but I honestly don't care enough to. Uh, I can look it up uh, in uh, um, the, the manual for this. So this setup is still not quite ideal. That 72 uh, uh, millivolts is still a fair amount of drop. The next thing I tried is using one of these uh, 0.1 header jumpers. And I said we have it open right now, and now we can go ahead and plug these in. And I apologize, I may have to go off camera to do this because the I don't want to, that side wasn't bad, eat up too much time with this. And I actually demonstrated these with uh, the uh, clamp on current meter earlier and you can see that these are just about the worst offenders we have you can see that my phone recognized that it's being charged but we're dropping 219 uh, millivolts that's you know way more than we had before and now if we wanted to let me switch this to volts use the clamp on current meter plug that in, turn it on, and don't forget you always have to zero the meter like that. And now go ahead and clamp that on. And we can see that the, the meter is hovering right around uh, uh, an amp. And just by jiggling the wires around some, you can see the, uh, the voltage drop dropped a little bit, but the the final story here is these leads are just so, so, so shitty that <clears throat> uh, the voltage drop across these becomes really high and really affects. So you have to be really careful with the kind of uh, wiring that you use to uh, wire your project together.
The solution that I found worked the best is just to use one of these banana uh, uh, cables uh, to make the, the jump across the bridge. And uh, even though it seems like I had these now and that's what I was doing the measurements with, I actually, you know, I got these last and I found that these work the best. So if we take this banana plug and jumper it from this side to this side, like that, you can see that my phone lit up, it's recognizing that it's being charged, but look at the voltage drop. We're down to that about 20 millivolts that we saw by using that 0.1 jumper. And now if we take the meter and let's say, of course, you have to make sure that you zero it and we clip it onto the wire like that. Oh, come on, do, do, do. zero. Flip it on. We're seeing about the the best. Um, I don't want to say current, but about the best setup that you're going to see. The it's about what 1.3 amps. Still doesn't get us quite to that exact 1.5 that we wanted to, uh, but the. Uh, this meter here is actually interfering with us, so we can actually improve this a little bit by uh, swapping these. So let's uh, go ahead and do that off camera real quick and we'll jump right back to it. So what I've done now here is I swapped the uh, plug so the current shunt is right across the uh, board and the voltmeter is plugged into the other side and now we're seeing about the lowest uh, voltage drop that we've seen and we're you know within a margin for error we're actually pretty decently close to 1.5 amps i suspect that a lot of the error comes from this guy let me zero it out again just for the sake of posterity get that around the cable real well eh that didn't help quite so much that said this uh, the this current meter is probably the least amount accurate uh, piece of measuring equipment that I have mostly because it was so cheap but uh, you can see how uh, not knowing what your uh, equipment does or how it's there we go that's looking better about 1.4 is what we're uh, striving for it's a, not knowing what your equipment is doing or just measuring things willy-nilly, not being careful about <clears throat> uh, where your voltage drop is, how you're consuming current, etc., can really mess up your readings. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to comment down below. Uh, and have a good day.